And back with us now is Democratic Congressman Brendan Boyle of Pennsylvania, having just voted and, of course, voted for Hakeem Jeffries because, Congressman, the Democratic caucus is united. So the strategy for Democrats now is to stick together, don't run for the exits, don't vote present, force the Republicans to come up with the required number to elect a speaker. Where does I that get us, right. though, in this... Where does that get us, though, in this era when people want government to work? Yeah, yeah. let's just take a, a, a moment here and, and step back. I mean, the fact this hasn't happened in a century shows just how dysfunctional this Republican majority is. And what's interesting is that last term, we Democrats had exactly the same number, 222. And with that, we were able to pass some of the biggest and most important domestic policy legislation since the 1960s. Here, this other side can't even elect a speaker, something that every side, after every election, has been able to do in my grandparents' lifetime. I also want to return to a point that Joy made earlier. Um, as someone who will be leading the fight on the Democratic side for a clean increase in the debt ceiling as the incoming ranking member of the Budget Committee, uh, this is not a good sign that the now majority party, the fact they can't even elect their own speaker, tells me that we're going to have a real problem come this summer if we're looking to have a clean increase in the debt ceiling, if they're having this sort of a problem literally on days one and two. Oh, indeed. And I just want to also point out that there is a real contrast in what's happening in Kentucky today, because just across the bridge from a very controversial, decrepit bridge linking Kentucky and Ohio, uh, Cincinnati to Kentucky, literally is the president of the United States, the Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, now the longest serving leader of any any caucus in the Senate, as well as the Republican governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine, the Democratic governor, Bashir, Andy Bashir of Kentucky, and the senators, Portman and Sherrod Brown from Ohio. I mean, what you've got is a completely bipartisan, unified group to celebrate infrastructure and the billions that are going to go to rebuilding that old bridge, which has an incredible impact on the GDP of this country. Some, some number percentage, I think it's 3% yeah. of the daily uh, GDP goes across that bridge, Congressman. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, this is another example of there's actually a real cultural difference between the House Republican conference and the Senate Republicans. We saw that manifest itself almost exactly two years ago on January 6th. We saw it on the vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill. I think 19 Senate Republicans, including um, Minority Leader McConnell, voted for it, while on, on the House side, that's, that's really unimaginable. Um, we're seeing this continue and, and continue to play out. Uh, in some ways, and Brendan Buck might uh, I'd be interested in his opinion on this, uh, in many ways this fight on the Republican side, it's all within the House Republican Conference, and it's been brewing for about a dozen years now. It began in 2010 with the Freedom Caucus. It's the same crowd that brought down Boehner, that would have brought down Paul Ryan, and, and here we are. And until there's a Republican leader who is willing to just stand up to them and have this fight, we're just going to see this continuing round and round. Well, Congressman, thank you very much for coming off the floor and uh, stay in touch. If the strategy changes, please let us know.